Hi, everyone. I'm excited to be here today to talk to you about some of the miracle stories that are happening right here in our own city, in our own state, every day. My name is Tony Kosha, and the title of our show is Tony's 50,000 Coincidence Miracles. Please note, uh, this show is not about religion, and we're not trying to change anyone's religion, and we're not trying to get you to join any religion. Uh, it's just about miracle stories. I don't know of any religion on the planet that doesn't talk about miracles. Uh, that's why religions begin, because they have something that's telling them there's really a God. But we're not going to get into that. We're going to just talk about miracles and leave the decisions about all that up to you. So we don't care what religion you are. Uh, we just want to talk about miracles. Uh, if you are an atheist, uh, I'm, I think you'll enjoy the program as well, although I can't guarantee you'll remain an atheist very long after you hear uh, many, many convincing stories, uh, coincidence kinds of stories about miracles. Uh, you can email me your own stories if you wish. Um, we'll try to use all we can on the show. I can't guarantee we will, depending on volume and time. But you're welcome to send your stories on to us, and we will mention them when we can. Uh, you can send them to the following email address. Um, uh, but please notice that if we do use your story, we won't mention your name. We'll keep you anonymous. And we suggest that in your story, when you send it to us, don't use your correct name. That way, anyone listening will not be able to figure out that it was you that sent the story in. Uh, the email address you can send your stories to uh, is very easy to remember. It consists of two words and three numbers. The first word is Tony, spelled T O N. Y, and the second word is and, spelled A-N-D, and the numbers are 777. So once again, the name is Tony and 777 at AOL.com. Well, let us begin. Well, here's a great coincidence miracle to start the program off with today. Uh, we got a note from someone who said that over the last three years, they've had a couple of coincidences that stunned them lately. It seems like when they're rushing around preparing dinner, about twice over the last three years, they bumped into a knife that was on the counter, and the knife fell off the counter and stuck into the floor. And the last time it happened was just now recently, and it stuck into the floor again, about three inches away from their big toe, and they were doing the cooking uh, in their bare feet. So that gets us gets our attention, I'm sure, not to rush around with knives on the counter, but two coincidences where the knife stuck in the floor. So uh, they got the point not to do that anymore because someone has been guiding the knife not to be hitting them in the foot so far, I guess. And that's why they're startled that it's a... Uh, and they're going to be more careful. They stress the fact that they got God has gotten their attention not to rush around in bare feet with knives on the counter. So I'm taking this miracle to heart myself, and I hope you are. Our next story is from a very proud grandfather who relates that he did a lot of babysitting when his grandchildren were young, spent a lot of time with them, and he taught them about the Bible and taught them about God. And now he's so proud and delighted because uh, one of his grandsons is 28 years old and has two boys of his own, uh, one six years old and one four years old. And he relates to us that the uh, grandson told him that even the six-year-old now is noticing coincidences and God's life uh, with him on earth uh, as he's growing up. So the grandfather is uh, very impressed and delighted and joyful to see that all of his time spent with his grandson talking about God and talking about the Bible has helped his son to have a great faith. And now his son is passing it on to his grandson and it, I know the feeling myself because I am a great-grandfather now, and I have a similar experience in my life as well. So I thought you might appreciate that when you do this, when you teach your family about God, you'll 
reap the rewards of joy because you'll see your family becoming good friends of God as they grow up. And they really can't help themselves because once you are a friend with God, you realize there's no better way to live your life. I mean, once you have a a friend who's God, how can you go through your life after that without having a friend like God in your life? So that's what happens. Once you experience God, you want everybody to experience him, especially the people that you love. Our next coincidence miracle is from someone who says that uh, they don't have to get up until 8 a.m. on Sunday morning, and uh, they've been setting the alarm to get up at quarter to eight. Uh, well, they went, they get up 15 minutes earlier because they enjoy listening to our show. And what happened last Sunday was uh, they normally set their alarm to get up at quarter to eight in the morning on Sunday. They forgot to do it, but they were awakened by God to wake up precisely 7.45, just in time to turn the radio on and hear our radio show. So they certainly take this as a coincidence miracle. They intended to set the alarm, forgot to do it, but were awakened anyway. That happens to me often, too. When I forget to set my alarm, God always comes through. If I have important meetings, uh, he wakes me up on the exact time that I would have set my alarm for. So I know God uses this technique of waking us up when we forget to set our alarm, and hopefully you'll notice that. And the precision of that, you know, the preciseness of God doing that is what tells us it's a miracle because God is all-powerful and he is very precise. Our next coincidence miracle is from someone who says that they had a very hectic week, very tiring week, and we all have those on occasion. And they decided, uh, they were thinking about anyway, on Sunday to just sleep in and not get up and not go to church for worship services. Uh, They normally go to worship services on Sunday, but they were so tired, they thought they would not set the alarm, etc. But uh, they felt badly as they were going to bed that night, so they set the alarm to get up uh, to go to Mass, even though they were tired. And they tell us that uh, they woke up refreshed. They weren't exhausted, so... Apparently that was a miracle, the first sign of a miracle. But the point they raised because they've been listening to our show for a while about numbers is as they drove off to Mass uh, for Sunday morning, they noticed when they got to the first stop sign that they were following a car and the license plate on the car was capital U, capital T, capital U. That's U-T-U. And they said they were thinking about that was a unique license plate, and they know we talk about how numbers can remind you of, I'm sorry, letters can remind you of numbers, and so they took the time to think about it and calculated that the letter U is the 21st letter of the alphabet, and the letter T is the 20th, and so they took this license plate to mean that the U was three sevens, and the T was four fives, And the other U was obviously three sevens. And as you know, if you've been listening to our show, three sevens and three fives uh, and three fours actually even are holy numbers, uh, very significant about God and the Blessed Virgin Mary and the presence of God. So they took all this to mean that they were happy they got up for Mass and they set the alarm because they were getting this reward miracle, they called it. Instead of coincidence miracle, they called it reward miracle, that God was showing them that he was pleased because he orchestrated this car to be right in front of them as they were uh, stopping at the first stop sign on the way to church. So I I will pass this on to you. You know, we don't preach about religion. We don't preach people talk about religions and preach religions. But in this person's case, they had a, a coincidence miracle. They called it a reward miracle. I feel that way sometimes, too. Sometimes, you know, God gives me coincidence miracles, and I feel like he's patting me on the head because I did something he was pleased with. And I've had this happen to me, too. I've, you know, taken the effort sometimes to go to a a special church that I was inspired to go to. Uh, I had to drive more miles to get there because I was inspired to go to a church um, that was farther away from my normal church. And I would get little clues like this, too, when I got to the new church, or I'd see a 
a car with three sevens pulling in the parking lot when I got to this other distance church. So uh, that's why I'm sharing this miracle with all of you, because God gives coincidence miracles. But in some cases, we get these nice, uh, cute uh, reward miracles as well. Our next coincidence miracle is from someone who reminds us that with the COVID uh, problem we've had for the last couple of years, I guess we're at two and a half years now, I guess, uh, many of us have altered uh, the way we connected with other people in the past. I mean, if we're doing work by remote or school by remote, uh, if we've been doing that for a while, we lose some contact with people. And so this person relates how uh, they had um, they were trying to email a friend of theirs, and they wasn't they weren't getting any response. And so they assumed that the person had changed their email address because normally the person did respond, but they had not been in touch for a couple of years because of the COVID-19 problem. Uh, So they telephoned their friend and said, you know, we haven't talked. uh, It's been two years now, and I was trying to email you something, and I I think I must have the wrong email. And and the person responded and said, golly, uh, you're right. I did change my email address, but... uh, I'm so stunned that you called just now because I was just sitting here talking to my spouse about what you just said. I said to my spouse that uh, you and I have not talked in about two years because of COVID, and I was wondering how you were doing, and I was talking to him about uh, I should get in touch with you, and look at the phone rings. So both of them experienced a coincidence miracle, And only one of them had been listening to the show, so now they've uh, talked about how our show exists and talks about coincidence miracles like this all the time. So I'm delighted we can share this with everybody listening today because, again, this is a a coincidence miracle, but, you know, one person could look at it like a reward miracle as well. Uh, They were doing something. God inspired them to call their friend and check out their email. It was an inspiration. They felt God inspired them to do that. And what happens when you do what God inspires you to do? You get coincidence miracles, and not not every time, but usually. Uh, and sometimes now, since we've got some people calling these coincidence miracles reward miracles, maybe we could call this one a reward miracle just for today as well. And maybe encourage some of you people out there Uh, who are not noticing coincidence miracles, maybe you could start looking for them and look for them and think of them as reward miracles and you might notice them a little better. Uh, A nice thing to teach your children, by the way, that when they see a coincidence miracle, you can tell your children that sometimes, not every time, but sometimes the coincidence miracle is God patting you on the back and patting you on the head saying, good job when you're doing something good for somebody else. Our next coincidence miracle is from someone who uh, was inspired to go visit a friend of theirs, a shut-in who was living alone, and so they got ready, they called beforehand, and they pulled out of their driveway to go see the shut-in, and the first car coming toward them was a car with four sevens on the license plate, 7777. Well, we've had quite a day today. We've had like six miracles. We had the knife story. We had the proud grandfather. We had the person who was awakened by God at quarter to eight to listen to our show. We had the person who saw the license plate uh, with the letters U, T, and U, and they converted that to numbers. We had the person who called to check an email and called the person who was talking about them when the phone rang. And now we've had the story about the shut-in who saw four sevens as they were going to visit a shut-in. So we've had quite a day. I think we got our money's worth today. God bless you all. I'll talk to you next week. Mm-hmm.